Hello, good morning, it's Sunday morning and it's me, Richard, and Paul. Say hi, Paul. Hello. That's it. That's hi. Good. So, um, I hope everybody's um, okay this Sunday morning and everybody's recovered from their royal wedding celebrations. I do hope you enjoyed my video yesterday. Um, Clearly some of you didn't, so you took yourselves away. It's like the trash took itself out. Anyway, enough of that. Good morning. We've decided to have a little chat about various things, including mainly gardening stuff. Um, as somebody said, oh, you know, do one of those things you did together again. So that's why we're here. So um, let's let's start with a few gardening bits and pieces. So Paul, it's really over to you. And you wanted to start off talking about watering, didn't you? Yeah, yes. We've, at the moment, there's a lot of requirement for, for watering. We've gone through the winter. We've had spells of very, very heavy rain but nothing which has really got into the, the ground at significant length uh, or depth rather. And I think it's important that when people water, you understand that you need to give something generally, something that is growing in the ground needs a good soaking. Mm. And that doesn't mean just a, a sprinkle with the watering can every day. It's better to water once or twice a week and give that plant a real drenching um, or the roots of the plant. Yeah, at the, at, the at the base of the plant, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. At the base of a plant, a real drench, and do that once or twice a week, then give it a little sprinkling every day. Because if you give it a yeah. little sprinkling every day, then it just gets into the very top millimetre or two millimetres of soil, and then it will evaporate off. And I, I find when I watering things I very often count to a certain number so what number well when I was doing my potatoes yesterday in the raised bed and in yeah. the ground I was using a hose with a spray attachment and I counted to 10 on each of the white potatoes because it's a nice round number and I, I feel that that is then soaking into the ground but then I go back and do it again. So you're saying essentially 10 seconds, really? Yeah, it's about 10 seconds yeah. for a first watering. I mean, and has then anybody I... told you that? No, but it That's seems to work for me. That's something that you feel works for you. It works for me. Okay. So I count to 10 and give it a good soaking. And then when it has soaked in, when I've done all of the potatoes, I then start again. You go back. So they effectively have about 20 seconds of water. Yeah. But instead of just doing it in one one watering, I do it in two, which gives the ground time to soak up that water from the first mm. one before you do another. Mm. And I do that with tomatoes, I do it with beans. I most probably don't count to ten. In fact, with, with tomatoes and beans, I count to five. And, yeah, because also it's ty the time of day that you water oh, as well, totally. isn't it? I mean, I noticed that video we watched from Charles Dowding. He was talking about it's absolutely fine to water in the sunshine, wasn't he? Yeah. And he was saying people worry that the leaves are going to get burned and things like that. <coughs> Pardon me. But he said, no, the leaves aren't going to get burned. It can't, it doesn't happen. You said it's a myth. I think I think what it does do, particularly with potatoes and um, and tomatoes, is it can cause blight. So the dampness on the leaves can cause a fungal yeah. thing. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. Do apologise. And also the other thing, it's better to water in the morning than it is at night, particularly if you've got slugs and snails. Because if you water at night, the slugs, it, it, the temperature is going to be lower, it's going to be darker, slugs and snails will come out and they'll love that damp soil. So they'll go all over your, your lovely vegetables or plants or whatever 
and have a really good munch. Mm -hmm. Where if you give everything a good watering as early as possible in the day, well, you know, after you've woken up, obviously, um, then the water soaks in and the surface will dry mm. and that drier surface will not be as comfortable to cross for slugs and snails. And of course there's the mulching issue. And if you there? mulch, yeah. You've got if to the, mulch yeah. to keep the moisture in. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly the big the bigger plants. And you can use anything for mulch, can't you? Yeah, virtually. Mm. Yeah. I mean even sometimes you can even use shredded cardboard, though that I think you would only do when it's really hot because that will shade the ground because things like shredded cardboard which somebody was saying on YouTube about using the other day I think it just attracts slugs and snails underneath so, uh, so they, hide. Of, they hide in they the get in and they hide yeah because they come through most slugs actually come are in the all slugs are in the soil are generally in the soil unless you've got grass and things mm. they're in the soil and they come up and feed and then they go back down right and that's another thing which we weren't going to mention organic slug pellets mm. even though they may be organic and okay okay for wildlife mm. you still should not use them liberally you should use them sparingly mm. and we generally only use them when something is is raised so at the moment we've got carrots and parsnips in raised beds and we have used a, a a small sprinkling of pellets organic slug pellets on there but i know that nothing else because they're netted nothing else is going to get in there mm. to get that slug away mm. okay I know you also wanted to talk, well I wanted to mention about watering for pots, as mm. you know, you probably saw my video when I did the window boxes with the geraniums in the bedroom. So with those, what I tend to do is I tend to water for the first week, once they're settling in, I give them lots of water every day to make sure that, you know, they settle into the pots. And then what I've done this week is I've watered them a little bit most days, mm. but just a small amount. But I've noticed the compost is still moist, so they've not dried out. In my experience, watering a little bit every day for window boxes, especially in the summer, um, that yields the best results as mm. long as you feed them regularly. Um, but I know the compost that I've used has got built-in feed, which is supposed to last for X amount of time, I'm not sure. Three months. Um, so I'll probably give it some feed, you know, during the summer, just as a boost. But I won't overfeed, that's the other thing as well, not overfeeding plants. Okay, I know you also wanted to talk about seed germination. Yeah. It's been a tricky year this year on a number of fronts with the beasts from the east, various cold snaps, all of that, deluges of rain, then being quite dry. The germination, I think, for a lot of people has been a challenge this year. Um, I've got some lettuce seeds, red and green lettuce seeds, that I got from Real Seeds, who I think are really, really good. And their germination has been really poor. Um, I've tried them twice and both sets have been really poor. I've most probably put in 50, 60 seeds a time and I've got maybe five or eight plants that have come up. And I know other people have had issues. Vivi from um, Vivi, what Vivi did next, Vivi's Kitchen Garden, um, she had an issue with her compost for her tomatoes and they, they, they just died as did various of her other plants. And a number of other people have, have complained about either compost mm -hmm. or the challenges they've had with germination and I think it can be a bit disheartening but the thing that we need to remember I mean at the moment it's May what's it the 20th or something and you've still got time to to get things in we are I think we're uh, as gardeners and as growers we want to get things going and see things growing and I know I look at my peas and on a daily basis and I think well they've only grown a millimeter or two or have they grown at all and I think we we forget that you know things do take time to grow mm. but um, what 
has been successful with germination for me has been um, our self self um, collected seed the ones that we collected last year for the beans and various other things and they have grown really well um, maybe because they're they're very fresh someone did say to me that because many of our seeds are actually that the seeds you buy from the, the catalogues are grown in China sometimes they may have been grown two years ago or even longer why have they been in, grown in China oh because because we have we have we have regulations over here which are 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 challenging and it's, stupid it's a challenge to grow so many seeds for people but i also think that seed should be grow, should be available in smaller packets i mean sometimes you buy i mean like parsnips which you need fresh every year to to guarantee germination of them you might buy 500 parsnip seeds. Now, there's not many people who are going to use 500 parsnip seeds. They might think, oh, I can use that over three or four years, but that's not going to happen because they won't be fertile enough. Mm. Um, and I think I, I'd like to see smaller packets of seeds so that we could buy seeds for 50p, 75p, and have, um, you know, like 100 parsnip seeds in it, or 50 enough. parsnip seeds. Enough. Enough for a person. Obviously, you can share, but I think all of us know that however many seeds we give to other people or however many plants from seeds we give to other people, we end up with a huge batch of seeds which over a year or two years are, are generally um, not as fertile and will therefore not germinate quite as well. Though sometimes, I think Dad gave us some sunflower seeds back in 2010 my, I think it, no, it was longer than that because it was uh, it was from Nat West, so that was a long time ago, about two thousand and four, um, and and all of those came up. Yeah. So what about all those seeds you've got? Because you've got a big pile of seeds. It, I mean, there's a packet of seeds there. There's a packet of seeds there. There's twenty packets of seeds in there. What are you going to do with all of those? Why aren't we growing those things? Well, we are growing them. There's oh, ones in the fridge. Which, no, the, the packets of seeds that we get free oh, no, from we get lots of packets of seeds from, um, from the magazines that we get. And some are good and some aren't. And I do give some of them away, do but you? I need to give some of those away. But we've got poppies here, which we're going well, to... Well, they can just be cast, can't they? They're going to cast them at the community gardens. Oh, are you? Mm. Well, why aren't we going to have some here? Because you can have some others. Oh, Okay. All right, so, okay, so you wanted to mention that you've got a few things hardening off at the moment in the polytunnel. Yeah, you? well, I've got things hardening off, so that, that means... What have you got, first um, of all? Squash, cucumbers, uh, squash, cucumbers, courgettes, and something else. Tomatoes. Um, so we've got things hardening off to go outside the, the uh, ridge, ridge cucumbers we had a, um, are doing really well but the ones for the inside I had to re-sow because uh, they died. What, what's the difference between a ridged cucumber and a normal cucumber? Well ridge uh, cucumbers generally are for growing outside and, and normal what, cucumbers why, inside. Why are they I don't ridged? really know. Have they got ridges on them? Sometimes they've got ridges on them but you're supposed to grow them on a ridge on a ridge because on a, on a mound, oh. grow them on a mound of soil, oh. because their roots do not like to be in puddles of water. Mm. So the roots, even though they need plenty of water, they like to remain dry. Okay. So you've also got, you said tomatoes, cucumbers, courgettes, squash. Squash. Yeah, we're growing um, crown prints and uchiki curry, because we like those. I know um, Erica's little Welsh garden, she's growing um, some as well, so it'll be interesting to see how, how hers do. Um, and we, what you need to make sure, basically, if they're going to go outside, you need to make sure that you acclimatise the plant before you put it outside. And that's hardening off. That's hardening yeah. off. Otherwise, they, they, they will get shocked or could get shocked by the cold. I'm quite sure most of our viewers I'm know sure what's most, hardening most off. I'm sure most do. 
what it means and you know if you don't you can always google it absolutely yeah google i mean you know we see questions being asked very often of certain forums and i just always think to myself well you're online why haven't you googled it because you're going to get your answers straight away I mean, it, obviously, it's nice to interact with other people, obviously. Yeah, it's about like a community But you don't always get a response straight away. Whereas with Google, you get an immediate response. Very handy. I think it's good to Google things and to see what Google says and then say, Comparing I understand that this is the way that <clears throat> people do it. Do yeah. other people do it a different way? Yeah. Again, it's a bit like germination of, of parsnip seeds. I put mine straight in the ground. Other people grow them, chip them on, on <coughs> um, moist kitchen paper or loo roll mm. or something or mm. pop them into, um, into loo roll tubes with compost in. Mm. Okay. So you also wanted to mention <coughs> new things that you're growing. You're growing chickpeas, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. You've been inspired, <laughs> been inspired. by Vivi. <laughs> Hi Vivi. <laughs> Hi Vivi. Hi um, Vivi. I had a. I. Even though the mice my, my set all of Vivi's last, last year. Last year. Well, she had a few, I think. Yeah, well, she had a few because she's got those to sew. <laughs> That's so right. She sewed those so. and she did have some. But the mice got to them. Mm. But I haven't grown those before, so that's going to be interesting. Um, the reason that I decided to grow chickpeas is because. I sowed celery and it seemed to take absolutely ages, ages, eight, about 50 years to you know, how actually long did it take? grow that big. About two or three months to grow maybe <clears throat> two centimetres. And I just thought to myself, does it grow that slow? And I did Google and it did say it grew slowly, mm. but there just seemed to be nothing happening with it. It, it just got to a certain height and stopped. Um, so I thought, well, where I was going to grow celery, I will now put chickpeas in because I'd seen um, Vivi planting hers. And I thought, you know what, I'll give chickpeas a go. Because, yeah, because we like them. We like them, but apparently they're a lovely plant. Lunch. We saw it last yeah. year with yeah. flowers, yeah. which were really good for the bees. Yeah. So I've planted those. I think there's about 90 in. Um, and we'll just see how they do. And then about two days after we planted them, or I planted them, mm. I noticed that the true leaves were coming on the celery. So mm. the celery plants that I'd been waiting to come up with the true leaf, all of them have now little baby celery true leaves mm. on them. Baby celery. So now I need to find a place for them. You're very brown, Paul. Look, I've gone from blue to white and oh, you're brown. very brown. Well, I think you're brown. It's not using sunscreen. No, no. Everybody, reminder, how do you think I maintain this skin of a 20-year-old? It's sunscreen, factor 100. And never smiling. Oh yeah, I don't smile. I no, don't or laugh. No, I don't laugh. No. I don't smile or laugh. No, no, I haven't laughed for 20 years. No, or give um, any emotion. No, no emotion whatsoever. I like to, to be like a Vulcan. <laughs> um, okay, so we also wanted to give um, a few shout outs, so we'll do that now. Um, so we've already said hi to Vivi because we love Vivi's channel, she's great. Um, there's a few other channels that follow us um, and we follow them, so I just wanted to say hi. Um, Giant Dormouse, we love your channel. Yeah. Um, you're always full of really useful information and you always give really good feedback to other people, which I think is great. And you also give some lovely comments, so thank you very much for that, we really appreciate yeah. it. Um, also, you wanted to give a shout out to Erica of Erica's Little Welsh Garden, yeah, because um, you were exchanging pumpkin information. Weren't yeah, you? earlier in the year we were we were exchanging. We were talking about pumpkins on on YouTube, and um, and as I said earlier, she's she's growing pumpkin this mm. year. I, I think she's growing Uchiki curry or Crown Prince for the first time. Um, so good luck with that. 
Yes, good luck. Um, Sapa Gardner, we love watching yeah. your videos. You are so cool mm. um, and laid back. It's great to watch. Um, and again, you know, you give good information. Um, and you also give really nice comments and feedback to us as well. So thank you very much for your great videos. Um, also, I wanted to say hi to Diary of Roses Garden. You're always yeah. giving me lovely comments, um, which I really, really appreciate. It's really nice of you. And then a couple of people you've been talking to about onions. onions. Um, Amanda's allotment. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, I've got an ant. Well, let's hope they're not traipsing through the house like they were last year. I do hope not. See, strong they've got strong legs. legs. They've got strong legs. Come on, off the paper. Okay, because we don't like killing things. No. We just like to shoo things out of the house. But we did have ants come in. We did that with a giant snake when we were in Bali, didn't we? We did, yeah. Um, we did have ants coming in last year and we chased them away with peppermint oil. Mm. Um, lots of peppermint oil smeared all over the floorboards. It probably took the varnish off, but I didn't care. And dripped in between the cracks of the floorboards in the area that they were coming in. And it seemed to chase them off. They really don't like the smell. No, they don't. So peppermint oil is one, you know, natural, non-chemical, non-man-made chemical way of chasing off ants.